No, nope, here we are. A few weeks ago, we did a preview of the Rob Michaels sale that uh, was going to take place on the uh, 12th, the 13th, and the 14th of May. The sale is over, and I thought it would be fun to go back and see how things did. We'll take a look at some of the pieces I thought I just particularly liked to see how they did, and the surprises in the sale, which there were a number of them. There were some very strong prices. And uh, we're going to start with the lead lot of the of the entire sale that did extremely well against a fairly modest estimate. If it was estimated at five to ten thousand euros, and the vase ended up selling for six hundred and forty four thousand plus the buyer's premium, which is another hundred and eighty thousand or so. So here's the vase. All right, and they 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 listed it as Chinlung marked probably later or possibly later. Um, and there it is. And the workmanship on it was superb, uh, I have to say, and it looked awfully good to me. And uh, here's the top of it, the bottom of it, here's the base. And uh, the base got a lot of looking at, a lot of people went over it that know their stuff. And uh, I, I think that the jury came back and said, yeah, this is Mark and period. And there's a few elements on it that would that could possibly lead you to that conclusion just from looking at the bottom of this thing. Uh, this very smooth, creamy white paste, this flattened, nicely flattened foot, well trimmed with some old staining on it and whatnot, and this very nicely done mark. Now, the, a, a perfectly done mark isn't necessarily the indication of anything, but um, the workmanship on this was just fabulous. With the hanging chime here, this is a Buddhist chime that's coming down um, with a pendant attached, linked with a bat, and then all of these clouds and so forth all around it. Uh, the audience uh, apparently felt it was period because it got a lot of interest. And you take a look at the bid history, there it is. It uh, started out at $4,000 and jumped to 300,000, uh, uh, 4,000 pounds. And notice this, it jumped to 300,000 euros um, on the second bid. And then 310, 320, 340, and so on in uh, $10,000 increments all the way up to uh, 610,000 euros plus the buyer's premium. Uh, but this is a, a very rare vase. Uh, uh, and apparently it is it is a period one, but it's a form and style that you don't see very often. It wasn't an enormous vase. It wasn't the, the, the thing was 30 inches tall or something. It was just about 14 and a half inches tall, but spectacular presence, beautifully potted, nicely, nicely decorated, of course. Uh, the, the tone of the cobalt was outstanding and uh, uh, everybody was uh, uh, happy happy with the uh, Chinlung um, uh, attribution. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom and you see, see in the corners here, you examine the foot rim of this, you'll see that there was some staining and natural looking staining. This doesn't look like it was applied or put on to fool anybody. And then you have these polished areas in the corners from where it stood in a stand at some point or was standing up, resting on its feet. But I suspect the stand did that. And uh, uh, you end up with these, the, showing this very creamy, uh, uh, you know, nearly pure white porcelain that was uh, underneath it. And um, there you go, 100, 100 uh, 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 what is it, about 100 times estimate, roughly, something like that, uh, I think. Go back and double check that. Uh, well, it went, it, went, it went 100 times its, its, its low estimate and, and uh, 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 about 60 times its high estimate, which is pretty impressive, must say. Congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, and then on to this, the uh, Chinlung Bamboo and Seven Sage uh, in the Grove vase. This was a wonderful looking vase, and I thought it was reasonably estimated at 30 to 60,000 euros. It was unmarked. But uh, it was had a beautiful presence, a very soft uh, palette of cobalt on it, nice, nicely painted, beautifully potted, good proportions. Uh, here it is, and all the sages are going around it. There they are, uh, uh, examining a yang and yin scroll and so forth, and uh, a, a beautiful example. And uh, it ended up selling uh, for, as I said, for forty-eight thousand dollars in the U.S. plus the buyer's premium which would push it up to, what, about 60,000 or so, uh, roughly, roughly, roughly. Um, and uh, it was 55 centimeters tall, so it was nearly two feet tall. It was just a hair under, a couple inches under being 24 inches tall, which makes it a, a big vase. That's a, a pretty monumental vase. Had it been marked, 
um, uh, I suspect it would have uh, uh, gone a lot higher. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. And uh, you'll notice that the, the base of this is nearly identical to the, the previous face we just looked at. The same, same style, same uh, 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 creamy white glaze and so forth. This nice bluish tinge uh, to the bottom, which is uh, pretty typical of these. And uh, off it went. It was a very interesting uh, bit of pottery. And this was another bowl that did really well. It did extremely well. It was estimated at five to 10,000 euros. Uh, it was a 100 boys pattern transitional bowl. And uh, the 100 boys pattern has been around since the, oh, about the Jai Jing period, I guess. And uh, this bowl had a crack in the bottom right there. You can see it. And, uh, but transitional wares have become so popular. Um, I've said it many times, uh, the, uh, the, the Butler collection put, put them in the spotlight uh, because of the scholarship that he did, and it caused a, a, a whole bunch of people to take a second look at transitional wares, uh, which were completely overlooked, more or less, up until about the 1970s. Nobody cared about transitional wares. There was very little known about them, and uh, a bunch of books have come out, uh, largely due to Mr. Butler, and um, it caused it created a market for them and because uh, it's an interesting period in Chinese history it's, it's between the Ming and the Qing dynasty around 1650 um, when th a lot of things were in flux the official kilns um, there were no official orders going into the kilns and potters were left to their own devices uh, as far as the artistry goes and they created some awfully attractive things that not much was known about and uh, because there was no imperial involvement so to speak uh, not a lot not a lot of attention has been paid to it until uh, the last 30 or 40 40 40 years or so and uh, in this case the bowl despite the crack it had a, had an estimate of five to ten thousand euros ended up selling for thirty five thousand uh, US dollars or thirty four thousand euros which brings the the total of the the, the bowl up to about fifty four thousand dollars and it was beautifully decorated very soft colors again uh, nice palette. The, the 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 depiction of the boys is very whimsical. Uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a nice piece of porcelain. But I was I'm, I'm a little I'm, I'm I'm well I'm not I'm I'm surprised, but I'm also happy that uh, appreciation is starting to be shown for things that have cracks on them, uh, because for a long time, uh, if you know, if a piece of porcelain had a crack in it, it didn't bring much. And uh, now we're starting to see, uh, I think, a bit of a change. And this was a significant crack or a break right here is the chip out of it. And uh, they've displayed all of it very nicely to show everybody what happened to the bowl. And uh, despite all that, did just fine, did just fine. And again, here you have another transitional vase, these sleeve vases, which are now also being, uh, I've said it before, they're being reproduced um, in huge numbers. So be very careful. This is a real one. All right, it was uh, be beautifully done. It had a minor glaze flaw running down the outside of it, but nothing, nothing, no, not damage. But it was beautifully painted. The uh, it was it was it's like a circular canvas the way they did this. Just absolutely great. Nice shading of the colors. Uh, here is the uh, the the rocky uh, those rocky cascades that became so popular in the transitional period, and were continued on to the Kangxi era. With the uh, with the with the shading of the of the light hitting hitting the rocks and so forth, beautifully done. Nice looking clouds coming down it, uh, absolutely wonderful thing. And you have this uh, uh, fabulous uh, hand trimmed creamy uh, ivory uh, uh, porcelain base. Uh, but you can see the the the, the, uh, the 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 scrape marks from the potter when he cleaned up the foot rim. You can actually still see them all. And then he went around the outside of it and trimmed it with the flat edge of the knife, as you can see, and rounded it uh, gently and then fired it. And uh, you want to be very careful, though, because they are reproducing these by the boatload. They turn up on eBay all the time. And uh, this one did great. It brought $52,000 U.S. plus the premium. So you're up around, oh, up, upwards of oh, almost $70,000 for it which is quite a leap when you consider that uh, 30 or 40 years ago, these, these vases were selling for uh, just a few thousand dollars, a couple of thousand, 3,000, 4,000. There wasn't a lot of interest in them. And today it's a, it's a different world. All right, now uh, let's see here. Oh, this, these were fantastic. Um, a beautiful pair of grisaille decorated plates with maidens in them. 
uh, beautiful uh, young shen colors and this was a these were Markin period plates it was a pair all right which which made them really uh, very exciting and interesting and uh, the audience decided these are absolutely Markin period and they ended up going for seventy nine thousand dollars plus the premium so you're up around uh, 80 just just uh, just about a hundred thousand dollars for the two plates against a four to eight thousand euro estimate all right, um, uh, which which is is not a terrible surprise, really terribly big surprise, because if you look at the quality of the work on these, uh, the, the the beautiful beautiful rim, um, uh, this this flattened rim with these with these flowers floral sprays in them, and the very very fine grisaille decoration, uh, it was really exceptional. I'm kind of surprised they didn't include a a, a close up shot of the faces because they were they're so beautiful so absolutely beautiful with and then the only color they used was a bit of gilding and so forth here on this uh, root table with some objects and and then they used a little bit of black ink to highlight the hair but the uh the plates were beautiful and these weren't enormous these were uh what were they eight inches eight inches a little over eight uh just a hair over eight inches in diameter each but they got the crowd going <laughs> And, uh, and then there was onto this that we talked about this in the preview because I just thought it was such a wonderful Mei Ping vase uh, with this uh, very sensitively done red with blue and how it, the, the artist was able to incorporate it all so beautifully uh, all the way down the piece. I thought this was just a wonderful uh, example of um, uh, what happens when underglaze blue and underglaze red gets fired successfully, uh, which, is, which is no simple trick. Uh, to do it, it, it takes a great deal of focus uh, for the kiln people to keep the temperatures right to control those temperatures. Otherwise, the copper red that you see here would have turned green um, or turn black sometimes, even more disastrously. But uh, th this this face came out great, and uh, I think it went for a reasonable price: twenty nine thousand five hundred and seventy three dollars plus the premium, against a thirty to sixty thousand dollar estimate. I'm I'm kind of surprised it didn't get up even higher given the rest of the results, but uh, so I think somebody just got a very nice buy. And here's a picture of the, uh, the, of the bottom of it. Flat, unglazed, uh, uh, beautiful white paste, and so forth. Uh, it, was, it was an interesting base on that, by the way. Uh, uh, a, a more of the type of base you see on transitional wares. And, uh, and then moseying along over, oh, this was the section that had the, the Vietnamese porcelain in it, uh, blue to hue uh, vases. This, uh, there were several lots. There's a lot of interest in blue to hue vase uh, porcelains right now. Uh, it's, it's been growing um, over the last few years, uh, the focus on it, because it was such an interesting part of the market. And this was a pair of vases that were made for the King Kai Din in 1921 to 1924. These were ordered for him. Um, they had the, apparently some history on them. Uh, it, 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 it's all written up down there. I won't go through it. And I thought they were great. I just thought they were really terrific, and I thought the estimate was very reasonable. I think I think I even might have said it was low. Uh, and in the end, it did. It, it went through that estimate of a thousand to two thousand dollars and sold for oh around uh, what does that work out to with the premium? About about forty two hundred dollars for the pair. All right, but I don't think that was a crazy price because these these are really unusual and 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 as far as an investment goes, they're only going to go up in value uh, as, as as Vietnam becomes the the history of Vietnam and the in the and the uh, uh, art world in Vietnam becomes more and more developed and more focused on. Um, I, I see I see a, a pretty bright future for people that buy Vietnamese art because I think it's woefully underrated uh, compared to um, uh, things that were made for the uh, uh, ch Chinese market in, in Jing to Chen. These were made in China for the Ch Vietnamese market. Uh, so they were a type of export ware for, for, for Southeast Asia, which which makes it, which is an, an added, uh, uh, it's an added bonus, I think, to the collecting world. It's another market that was created. It's very, very good. And then on to this, the, uh, I just like this. This wasn't going to, you know, uh, uh, bring great, great guns. They, they've had similar examples at Christie's and Sotheby's in the past. These Cantonese uh, 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 decoupage uh, 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 paintings. And they would take bits of paper and cut them out and glue them on and create these scenes. And uh, I, I just think they have a certain charm about them that's very interesting. It was pretty good size. It was uh, two or three feet uh, long and, and a couple of feet wide. 
I think it was three feet. What was the, what were the dimensions of it? Uh, I should look at these before, right? Uh, okay, there it is. Um, um, the the painting. Okay, the painting was uh, uh, 24, a little under 24 inches, about 20 inches wide, and about uh, what's that come out to? About seven feet long. Good, almost seven feet long. Pretty good size. Okay, it was bigger than I thought. Uh, I thought it was great, though. I love the colors. I like the scene. Uh, there's a lot of uh, charm to it. It's, it has a lot of aspects that are re reminiscent of the kind of work you see on porcelain from from the early 19th century as well, the way the, the figures are positioned and so forth. And uh, it was a very popular genre. And it ended up selling for just $1,796, which I think, plus the premium, uh, which brings up to about $2,500. I think that's a very reasonable buy. I, I may be crazy, but um, it was estimated moderately at two to 4,000 euros. And it went for under the low estimate on the hammer. Uh, which is very unusual. Um, uh, I, I, I thought I thought it was I thought this would 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 maybe go to six thousand. Uh, so whoever got it got a great buy, a really good buy. And then on to these. These were fantastic, and they were big. These things were six feet. T weren't they? Um, uh, not six feet tall. They were uh, uh, seventy-five centimeters. So they were about uh, two and a half feet tall each. But look at the stands. Look at look at the workmanship. And these were uh, uh, mother of pearl and uh, soapstone carvings applied onto a screen. They're a pair. The quality of the wood uh, for the frame is just exceptional. Really, really finely carved. And um, look at the the way the, the way the the waves were done at the bottom. Classic uh, uh, 18th century work. He had dated it as tentatively as being 18th or 19th century. I think these are most likely 18th century. Um, uh, judging by the work, uh, the, the work was so fine on these. And if you uh, bring them in, and uh, there's a, there's one picture that shows the, the the figures very carefully. Hold on. There we go, right there. And you look at this workmanship in here, the way these faces are done. Always look at the, it'll always look at how the people are rendered when you look at these these things, and the way the rocks were done. That looks so naturalistic. The shading um, here along the bottom, and then you have these uh, beautifully done faces of the immortals. Uh, uh, you know, presenting uh, looks like they're carrying bowls and gifts and gourds, and then here, the, here, here is how they they illustrated the rocks in all different colors, all different shades of, um, of, of uh, soapstone, and they probably used a little, uh, some, some coloring on it and so forth, because they're very skilled at this. And uh, as I said, I think the, the, these were very rare. I think these are ex exceptionally rare and exceptionally fine. And I, I don't think that uh, $50,000 um, for these was at all unreasonable. Uh, I, I thought the estimate was very reasonable. But uh, th these were just beautiful. They were just beautiful. And uh, I think someone got a real value on those because they were so good. And then there were these, the covered bowls. Uh, Rob had dated these as uh, um, 19th century. I, my, my opinion was that these were probably uh, Kang Shi period. Uh, but it's a pair. They were, they were rare. They had foo lines on them. And uh, they gave them a, a modest estimate of just 1,500 to 2,500 euros. And they, they went right through that and ended up selling for a little over $8,000 with the buyer's premium. They went well over the estimate, three times the high estimate. And, uh, but they, they were great. They were elegant looking. Uh, a lot of the gilding was worn off the handles on, this, on, on these. And, and uh, it's, it's interesting because I think, I think they, they swapped the lids. I'm not sure. I think the, this lid belongs with that one, and this lid belongs with that one, uh, just because of the amount of wear on the biscuit to the gilding on this one relative to that one. But uh, minor thing, whoever buys them will put them however they want. Uh, but nicely done, nicely done. And uh, they, they took off. They just took off. They did great. And then there was this, the blue to hue bowl for the Vietnamese market, made in China, and uh, sent there. And th this was this was an example done in the Kung Shi period, uh, and so it, as a consequence, it brought a lot of money. It has an applied copper rim, has this wonderfully done, very stylized mountain landscape, and, and then on the back of it, as an inscription and poem, and uh, that makes it pretty interesting. And uh, it's S, it's uh, how wide was this? Eight inches in diameter, just a hair under eight inches in diameter. It looked to be in great condition, beautifully done 
top quality porcelain, top quality decoration, and ended up selling for about $65,000 US. All right, and then moving on to this section here. This was the, this was the, I talked about this plate because I, I thought it was so rare. Um, and sometimes, sometimes rarity can work against an object if you can't find um, a comparable to it or something to, to compare it to that's sold. Uh, a lot of people who tend to speculate in antiques um, will stay away from it because they don't know the value. Um, people who collect will chase it. And um, this one got bought, I suspect, by a collector. I, I, I can't ever recall having seen this, this, this particular pattern before uh, with the Dutch fisherman. Just very, un really unusual, really, really unusual. Beautiful um, Famille Rose enameling all the way around it um, in the uh, 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 you know, probably Yong Chen period. And uh, it ended up selling for 2,900 plus the uh, buyer's premium. So uh, ended up going for around, uh, what's that work out to? Just a hair under, around $4,000. I thought the estimate was very low. And um, uh, I mean, in the end, it, it brought its estimate, but uh, I, I thought that was uh, that was a real great thing, really great thing. And uh, whoever bought it uh, got a treasure, I think. I really do. And then this, the hexagonal um, Kang Chi Amari styles teapot. And I mentioned that this is, again, one of those things that you, how do, what do you compare it to? Um, uh, I'm sure that other examples have turned up. Uh, at some point or another, but n apparently not that many. And uh, when you have something that's unusual, uh, uh, unusual form, rare form, from a period, uh, people hesitate. And I think somebody stole this thing. I think this was the great one of the great buys of the day, $475 plus the premium. I thought that was an absolute bargain, an absolutely great bargain. Um, and uh, uh, but that's what it brought. But that sometimes, sometimes when you, if you, if you, if you, if you go after something that's rare and uncommon, um, you can sometimes get a great buy on it, uh, just because, uh, like I said before, the, the 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 buyers, the other buyers, don't know what the comp is, and if you if you get hung up on comps, and um, not buying based on your heart and what you love, you're going to end up missing things along the way because you say, oh well, they, they the expert said it was only worth this. Keep in mind. That the experts and, and Rob knows his stuff. He's been around a long time. This isn't a put down, but he had estimated this face at five to ten thousand dollars, and uh, look what it ended up selling for. So it's a it's a, you always buy with your gut. Buy with your gut always. All right. And then moving along to this, this was another example of this um, of Fang Hu vase with this beautiful glaze. I was just dumbstruck by this thing. I thought it was so great. Uh, uh, the, the form, the shape, the color, the way the color grades down, uh, the, the quality of the workmanship and so forth. Absolutely, uh, you know, mid 18th century, Yung Chen to Chin Lung period, somewhere in there, uh, but a beautiful example. And uh, it measured about, uh, what was it about? It was just a hair over eight inches tall, but a handsome piece of porcelain. But <clears throat> I went and looked it up, tried to look up, find another one, and I couldn't find one. And again, you have that situation where no comp, um, you, you, sometimes you're not going to get a lot of excitement over it. And I think whoever got this got a wonderful buy, ended up coming in at around $3,200 for the, for the piece, and absolutely wonderful, wonderful example. And on to this one, another rare form. This was, this was according to Rob, they, apparently they looked this thing up, Cal Calcutta Tiger Hunt Plate. It's the only one. Um, and is perhaps the rarest of all the all the hunts, the European hunt scenes depicted on porcelain, is this one, and um, uh, the Calcutta Tiger Hunt, and it was uh, just a little over eight inches in diameter, ended up selling for eighty four hundred and fifty dollars uh, plus the premium, so you're up around uh, ninety five hundred or so, or no, it'd be uh, a little over ten thousand, excuse me, uh, but but a, but one of a kind, one of a kind. And um, I have a suspicion this was probably, I don't know, I don't know, that, I don't have any reason to know this, but I, I suspect that there was a lot of institutional interest in this plate uh, because it is rare. And, I, you know, you, you can bet that the, 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 the museums, uh, the Rijksmuseum and um, uh, the, the Museum of Fine Art in Boston and the Metropolitan Museum in New York, the Peabody Essex Museum, 
this is the kind of thing that makes their hearts go wild uh, because because it's it's unusual and it's a very unusual trade good and uh, that that is a, a focus of all those museums all right and then uh, we had of course some very nice lots he always has good lots and uh, this was a was one of them I don't know what the condition was of these uh, they, they may have had chips and nicks and cracks and whatnot I don't know but um, there were 16 Chinese blue and white plates here, and they sold for um, uh, 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 barely $100 a piece, which I think was an absolutely marvelous buy. They were all 18th century. Uh, one or two of them might have been early 19th century, but that's about it. Uh, nicely done. Ended up selling for $1,267 plus the premium, so you're up around uh, $1,500 or so for 16 of these plates. Okay, and they were all roughly uh, uh, eight inches, eight and a half inches in diameter. All right, and then on to the gilded dishes. These were Yongshan to Qinlung period, but very rare, very rare with a monogram on them, a PM, whoever that is. And uh, here's the, uh, the, the backs, the sides, just done in that, 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 that wonderful classical style that was uh, so popular. Um, it, they almost look uh, 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 like they were they were were done um, uh, uh, in, in Europe with with the gilding, but these were Chinese. And uh, if you if you've seen a lot of these around, let me know because I haven't. Um, not done like this. And uh, somebody picked them up um, for forty six hundred and sixty seven six hundred and forty forty six hundred and forty seven dollars plus the premium, but rare. Elegant as all get out. They looked like they were in good condition. The enamels were still good on them and the gilding wasn't all worn off because the gilding on Chinese porcelain is notoriously susceptible to wear. And uh, these these were, were not worn. These were in nice condition. And it was a set of six cups and six saucers. So uh, is that an overpayment? I don't think so. I think that was a good buy. All right, and then on to this, the uh, Kangxi period uh, reticulated bowls and saucers uh, to get a pair of them, pretty unusual. And they were in good condition, beautiful snow white porcelain, lovely cobalt decoration, well, good, well shaded, and the carving and the reticulation was uh, just outstandingly well done. Um, these were really neat and tidy plates. Uh, bowls rather and uh, here you can see the work and you can see the inner bowl. These are double walled They call them sometimes double walled bowls and there's an inside cup and then they have the reticulated outer wall and uh, and, the, and the interior is all is, as you can see is all uh, Decorated and underglazed blue as well Just beautiful and uh, they did fine. They ended up selling for ten thousand dollars plus a third So you're up to around thirteen thousand or a little over two times the high estimate and then this, the uh, the big Wanli jar. I just I, I like big jars. I like big jars with cobalt on them. I own a few of them, and uh, this one was terrific. Uh, uh, wonderful uh, landscape scene. This repeating repeat of mountains and valleys and figures and people running all around it with these uh, big relief handled uh, uh, lions masks with rings, and uh, just you know classic Wanli workmanship. And ended up selling for forty-two hundred and twenty-five dollars, or around fifty-four hundred dollars for this pot, uh, right around its high estimate. But nice-looking piece of porcelain, and measured uh, around uh, what does it come out to? Thirty-nine centimeters, so it's uh, about fifteen inches and in, um, uh, fifteen, sixteen inches in diameter, in height rather. And then the yellow-lobed Wan Li uh, hair plates. Uh, I thought these were uh, extremely rare, extremely pretty, beautiful egg yolk yellow rims, uh, and then these these nice looking uh, interior scenes with a, a, a scholar sitting around watching the servant water his plants, his potted plant, and you have this classically done willow tree, you know, hanging over off of a rocky outcropping and so forth. Just these, but these were very very rare. Uh, as, as many of you know, if you buy these things, you know that uh, these uh, uh, hair's mark plates from the Wan Lee period rarely were done in yellow. And uh, I think the price was perfectly fine. Um, somebody, I think, got a good buy. Uh, they, they sold for, for about 3,400 euros, which is uh, $3,500, which works out to about uh, $4,400 for the pair. And uh, uh, a highly unusual and very rare pattern. 
and the uh, 100 Boys box cover. Uh, we had talked about this because I thought it was interesting that it was just the lid. So obviously, the, the, the base got smashed somewhere or separated from it somehow. Usually, it's because it gets dropped. Uh, and here, here's the, but here's the lid to one of these hundred boys jars done during the, uh, uh, probably during the Wan Lee period. Uh, very well done, good looking. And those of you that follow this kind of thing know that entire boxes from this period can can bring you know anywhere from a hundred thousand up to uh, 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 you know even four hundred and fifty thousand. In one case. Uh, there was a, one of the one of the big collections was dispersed a number of years ago and it brought a lot of money and here you have it a, a chance to buy well the lid anyway which is half of it <laughs> for forty four hundred dollars um, plus the premium so if, if you're not in a position to, to shell out two or three hundred thousand half a million dollars this was a great little opportunity for, for people that can't afford four or five thousand to pick up something that uh, they otherwise might not have a chance to own and learn from uh, because it, you, you can study these things, you can study the way the porcelain is done around here, the, examine the iron oxide line, look at how the glaze is done, all the little little things that uh, help you identify porcelain. And uh, this is a real premium piece. And somebody got it very, very reasonably. And then on to the uh, transitional, again, another transitional piece. Uh, uh, as I said at the beginning, transitional wares have come a long way. And here you have this bridge handled uh, 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 teapot, this rather a, a rather nice form, uh, this sort of a long, slightly, a lo not quite compressed and around as some of them, but a little elongated, classic transitional work. Uh, very nicely done and uh, ended up going for 5,281 plus the premium. So again, you're up around, uh, around $6,800. Uh, a far cry from what these things were worth, uh, like I said, 30, 40 years ago, when you could have bought them for, for oh, you know, six, 600 to a thousand dollars all day long. And in, and in auctions in New England, um, I, just as an aside, I remember seeing things like this at an auction in New Hampshire come up, and uh, I bought some of them uh, many years ago, and other people were buying them. It was a collection that, that got formed in Boston, ended up at a summer house. In, uh, up in up in up in the country, and uh, I, I, I think they were they were the pieces were going, transitional wares were going anywhere from two or three hundred dollars for for small jars and vases, up to uh, maybe six hundred for a big Wukai jar, seven hundred, um, that kind of thing. Uh, Skinners in Boston used to practically give these things away. When, before, back when Bob Skinner was around, they used to get them out of the states, and they'd line up three or four transitional pots, three or four Ming pots at a time and sell them. Um, it was it was pretty amazing. Uh, so there you are. And then uh, on to this, this is the last thing we're gonna talk about here is this Chinlung, probably Markin period, cobalt decorated with gilt. Uh, uh, again, one of these uh, uh, bridge handle teapots with the uh, serpent, uh, with the serpent holding the pearl between them um, on, the, on the top of the handle and uh, beautifully done with a gilt poem on it. And uh, it ended up selling for ten thousand dollars plus the premium, so you're up around uh, around thirteen thousand for the pot, thirteen and a half thousand. But again, a splendid example, uh, and and it looked to be in good condition, and uh, it brought the money all day long. There we go, and that's that's sort of a rundown of how the sale went. It did really well. Um, he, he's probably going to have another one in a few months, but it's always worth checking it out. And uh, you know, do your calculations to take into account the buyer's premium. He's in Europe, so he has a lot of overhead in Europe doing auctions. I, I, I wouldn't even dream about it because of the taxes and one thing or another, but um, calculate your, uh, your bids and in taking into account other expenses that are gonna come and you can very well participate in, in these sales. And he had other things that sold very reasonably um, in other areas, you know, vases and jars that went for a couple of hundred dollars. Um, uh, some, there were some, some nice uh, uh, bits of Japanese wear in there. We, uh, we already talked about there was that big pair of lacquer foo lions that were, I don't know what they were, three feet tall or something, three feet long, ended up selling for $10,000 and um, all kinds of interesting things. It's, it's, it, you, can go to the, you can go over to Live Auctioneers and uh, check the sale out for yourself. Uh, just go to the, the bottom of Live Auctioneers page, pull up the directory for Rob Michaels in Bruges, and um, you, can, you can get a, a, a good look 
and go through it lot by lot. There's a lot of lots here. It's three days worth of auctions and uh, hundreds of things each day. So there was a, a lot of material to go through. But I was very pleased to see it because the uh, all that's going on in the world, you don't know what the market is going to be from week to week. And so far, things are hanging in there pretty well. There's a sale coming up in Hong Kong uh, that we're going to be uh, talking about at uh, uh, Christie's. There's three, three or four auctions over there. They've got some good things. And we'll try to get that video out in the next couple of days. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We uh, always like to see new subscribers. And um, leave a comment. And if there's anything else you'd like us to cover, um, let us know. Let us know. We, we, we do read all the comments. So um, uh, if, there's, if there's a suggestion that we can do and uh, work it out, we'll be happy to do it. Okay. Thank you. And uh, have a good week. We'll be back later in the week with another video. Okay. Bye-bye.